Welcome back everyone. Today we are going to be talking about the new HDRI Studio Essential Kit which I have just launched. It's a new product and it has taken about two months of development uh, since I was the only one developing this alone. And the reason it took so long is because I was also working simultaneously on other projects as well. So apart from that, uh, I'm really happy that this thing has come to life. And today we'll see how we can use this to create some amazing lighting. Alright, so I have this basic scene here. If I show you my scene, this is what my scene looks like. This is a robotic arm I've modeled for this studio visualization purpose. And um, apart from that, let's see how the overall scene looks. So at this point, I don't have any light in my scene. But if I take something like maybe a sky dome light, you will see that we have a simple flat lighting going on. Now from a product a lighting perspective, what you can do is you can go for really nice three point lighting. If you want that nice shiny productive look uh, apart from that what if you are not let's say you're in a deadline and you cannot actually have time to do some kind of lighting but at that point what you simply do is take a simple HDR I find a good HDR online and apply it to your scene and that's it so the purpose of this studio lighting essential kit is basically helping artists to create more amazing lighting stunning lighting more quickly and having that flexibility to change your scene dynamically so as you can see i have a simple sky dome light i'm going to load in my hdr here file and browse your collection all right so i'm here in my hdr studio essential kit and i'm going to go with something like maybe a basic and from here you can choose anything that you want here you have thumbnail preview as well so i'm going to go with hdri 11 and i'm going to hit open all right so if i start my ipr it will start to load the hdr and it will convert it into a .tx file arnold always converts an image into a .tx file because it's faster to read that format for arnold and there you go so the first thing i'm going to show you is how the overall hdr is kind of being interacted here and if I go to the camera and let's select our sky dome light and turn this on. The first thing I'm going to do is increase some samples and add a bit more in diffuse and specular as well. Alright, so you have a simple lighting going on. Uh, what you can do from here, let's say you're not happy with the overall result. And this uh, pretty much technique applies to all HDR, not just with my product, but the other HDRIs as well. So what you can do is you can simply hit rotate. Let me turn this on and uh, you can see the overall scene dynamically changing and now this looks pretty good to me this scene is pretty nice looking bit of a cinematic look more of my style a bit of a dark theme kind of thing and from here you can just keep rotating unless uh, you're happy with the result so from here you can also just go crazy with it just rotate it wherever you want to get something like this result all right so let's say if you're not with the if you want a bit more cinematic lighting but not the usual same white tint so what you can do is you can go into your HDR pack again and you can go for something like maybe a tint or maybe like a neon so I'm gonna get into the tint and let's go with this one and uh, let's see how that looks all right I'm gonna start this and bring this out all right so bring this out and from here I'm going to select my HDR and let's increase the exposure to something like maybe a 2. Alright, so this looks good. I think I'm going to change my material to a bit more metallic material. I'm going to select this and go to paint and add a bit more metallic here. Alright, perfect. And also roughness to 0.4. Alright, there you go. So from here again, you can do the same thing. You can select your HDR if you're not with happy with the overall lighting and you can change it. You can rotate it. And I think I'm going to keep it somewhere right about here. You can get really nice highlights going on here. So this looks very neat to me. Again, you're happy to try different things, different HDR to get a desired look, whatever you want. And uh, just keep in mind if you're using any type of HDR, this technique applies to all the HDR. Make sure you have good amount of samples 
to have a clean render so as you can see i'm not using any transmission or subsurface scattering that's why i'm using more samples in diffuse and specular and uh, i have a minimum samples of five for the lighting purpose i will be increasing it in the final render and apart from that this is it for the maya let's move on to cinema 4d all right so as you can see i'm here in cinema 4d and i have the same setup going on same scene and I'll be using Arnold Render Engine, but if you don't have Arnold, I will be showcasing this in Corona Render as well and in Physical, uh, which is a native render for Cinema 4D. So this is my basic scene. So I'm going to go into my Arnold and if you don't have this Arnold docked here, make sure you go to extension and you will find Arnold somewhere around here. So let's go to Arnold and from here, I'm going to first thing I'm going to take is a simple IPR and I'm going to dock this right about here. Okay. I'm going to make the scale to somewhere about 90. All right. So as you can see, we don't have any light going on in our scene. So I'm going to go to Arnold and let's take a simple sky. So we have a default light going on. So from here, I'm going to get into my color and select texture. All right. So here, as you can see, I'm in my HDR Studio Essential Kit. And I'm going to go for something like maybe let's go with Sepia. And I'm going to load in my Sepia HDR and hit open. No, I don't want to copy at the product location and here as you can see it's generating one TX file because Arnold always creates a TX file for any type of image file. So once it's generated the TX file, it will be loaded. So as you can see, we have nice sepia 10 going on. So I'm going to bring this up and again, increase some samples here, give more samples to diffuse and specular. And since our scene is a bit darky, so I'm going to increase some exposure and there you go. So we are just using one Arnold Sky, one HDR to do the whole lighting and already our product looks pretty good. So again, you can, uh, if you want, you can go here and you can change the overall direction here. If you want more darker look, you can go for something like this. If you want a bit more brighter scene, you can turn this and have something like this. So it totally depends on what kind of uh, lighting you are going for. What do you want specifically? I'm going to go for 100 and uh, you can just play around with this have fun with this to get different kind of results so you can also take something different let's take something different and i'm gonna get into the bonus as well and let's try this one and it's generating the tx file and there you go so I'm gonna increase exposure to four and maybe rotate. So this looks pretty good to me. We have a nice tint of green, some agenda going on, some pink going on. And from here, again, if you don't like the scene, simply rotate the HDR to get a different type of result. Totally up to you. So I'm gonna go for something like maybe a 90 degrees. And from here, I can just keep rotating this until I'm happy with the overall result. And here, as you can see, I'm totally going crazy with this because I can, I guess. So from here, you can also hit simply R on your keyboard and rotate it from here if you want. And let's select our camera. And there you go. So uh, this was for the Arnold. Let's uh, get into a different render engine. And I'm going to simply get into my camera, delete the Arnold sky, delete the Arnold material and uh, let's take a corona new material and i will be using a simple material for the floor let's make the glossiness to something like this and i'm going to duplicate this material and i'm just going to change the simple color to create some variation all right and i'm going to drop this material onto my robotic arm and let's add a bit more shininess to our maybe like 0.6 Alright, so I'm going to change my render engine to Karuna render engine and I'm going to use a path tracing GI solver and I'm going to keep the pass limit to maybe 20. Let's take some bloom and glare and I'm going to make the bloom and glare to about 50 and some sharpening as well. Alright, so once you're done with this, uh, simply go to Karuna and uh, go to interactive viewport. So here you won't see anything because we don't have any light in our scene. So I'm going to take a simple sky from here. And let's create a Corona light material, drop it onto your sky. And in the light material, you can browse your HDR here. And again, I am in my, and again, I'm in my HDR studio essential kit. And from here I can go for something like maybe a dark and I'm going to open up 
my dark HDR. So dark was designed to give a bit more cinematic look to your renders, a bit more darky hazy look. So I'm going to go in my HDR here and I'm going to increase some intensity to this. And there you go. So I'm going to add some reflection here to maybe like 0.8. All right, this looks nice. So again, I can rotate the HDR to my desired look to get whatever kind of look I'm going for. I'm going to reset this quickly and try out a different HDR. And uh, let's go with Neon. And I'm going to open this up. I'm going to say no. Let's see how this looks. All right, so this looks something like this. I'm going to increase this intensity to somewhere about 10. And again, select your HDR. And from here, you can simply rotate this. It looks pretty good to me. I'm going to turn off the floor here. And if you don't want the HDR to be seen, you can simply add a Corona compositing tag and you can turn off scene by camera. That way you'll only have visualization for your product. From here, you can just play around with this. So that was it for the Corona render engine. It's really simple to do. And uh, let's move on to the physical render engine. All right, so I'm going to delete these materials. Let's delete this, delete this, delete this. And right. Turn on the floor and I'm going to double click on our material manager. Drop in a simple material for the plane and let's maybe take a black with, I don't know, let's take a GGX additive, specular to zero, reflection strength and bit of a roughness. I'm going to add a new material as well and I'm going to create a simple orange looking material and let's, we can take a GGX and have a bit more something like this and drop this material onto our robotic arm and let's change the render engine to physical and uh, I'm going to keep it to somewhere about medium and from here you can also take ambient occlusion to get a bit more high end result. So I'm going to keep the sky dome light as it is and I'm going to create a new material. This will only contain a luminance channel and I'm going to load in my HDR here. So I'm in, in my neon pack, I'm going to go for something like this and open this up and I'm going to drop this onto my sky and click on render. All right, so this is how it looks with the physical render engine. So you can use it with any type of render engine, any type of 3D program. The principle remains the same. All right, so let's move on to Blender. All right, so I'm here in Blender and uh, I'm using EV as my render engine. So as you can see, I have the same setup here. And uh, let's get into the material preview. I have no HDR, no light source whatsoever. So I'm going to go into my environment here world. And from in the color, I'm going to choose an environment texture. From here, I'm going to click on open. And here, as you can see, I'm in my HDI Studio Essential Kit. And I can choose whatever I want from here. I can go for something like maybe stripes. And I can go for stripe HDR I want and open this up. All right. So I have HDR loaded. So if I go into my render engine, so I rendered view, you can also hit Z on your keyboard. And from there, you can get into whatever you want. So we don't have any light um, intensity here. So I'm going to increase some strength to one and there you go. So let's turn off the plane here and this is what we have. Again, uh, if you want to rotate this or change the overall lighting of the scene, you can go into the shading and from here select the world. Here you'll see we have, let me bring this up. We have our HDR I loaded. So what you can do is you can select your HDR and simply hit control T to get mapping and texture coordinate. If you don't have this or not getting this by hitting Ctrl T, what you can do is simply go to Edit, Preferences, and in the add-on, simply search for Node Wrangler and make sure you turn this on. So once that is turned on, you can simply hit Ctrl T and get this. So from here, again, I'm going to go into the rendered view and I'm going to change the overall HDR here. So you'll see we have something like this, a bit more cinematic and dynamic, dynamic lighting going on. So it totally up to you what kind of lighting you're going for again. I'm going to choose something different. Since neons are my one of my favorites, I'm going to go for neon. You can also go for something else. 
maybe let's go with this all right so we have something like this again if you don't like the overall intensity you can increase or decrease the intensity from the strength here totally up to you and keep rotating this until you are happy with the overall result so i'm gonna drop in a different neon again just to showcase this uh, where is the neon yeah and we can get into let's go with this one and i'm gonna change the overall lighting of this all right this looks pretty good to me have fun with this play around with it if you are concerned about the background if you want you can simply uh i guess it was in somewhere here yeah in the film and you can simply hit transparent and you'll have a transparent background so that was it for the blender as well so play around with this have fun with this uh, and uh, if you do create something out of this pack please share with me i love to see what you come up with and how you are using this pack to create your amazing renders so that's it for this one and i'll see you in the next video